Hello friends, today we will discuss viscosity of bitumen and it is required in many applications. Viscosity is the resistance to flow of a liquid. It is a measure of consistency of a bitumen binder and a fundamental characteristic of the bitumen. It is highly sensitive to temperature. Viscosity is low at high temperature and high at low temperature. Now, since the bitumen is a thermoplastic material, its consistency varies with the temperature. The grade of the bituminous binder should be so selected that it has appropriate viscosity while mixing with aggregate and also after laying and compacting the layer. It is important to have a correct film thickness over the aggregate surface. The bitumen binders of low viscosity will simply lubricate the aggregate particles instead of providing a uniform thin film for binding action. And similarly, high viscosity does not allow full compaction and the resulting mix exhibits heterogeneous character and thus low stability value. The viscosity grading of the binder is based on viscosity measurement at 60 degrees centigrade. The system of grading was developed in the US and the temperature of 60 degrees centigrade was selected as it approximates the maximum pavement surface temperature during summer in the United States of America. And the same was adopted in India also in 2006. One more temperature is added that is 135 degrees centigrade. So viscosity is measured at two temperature. 60 degree centigrade is considered the maximum pavement temperature during summer in most part of the country and at 135 degree centigrade the bitumen is sufficiently fluid and this temperature approx approximates the mixing temperature of hot mixes pulp. The viscosity at 60 degree centigrade is important and a capillary tube viscometer is used to measure viscosity at this temperature and it is called absolute viscosity. Viscosity at 135 degrees centigrade is determined using Brookfield viscometer and it is called dynamic viscosity. In the case of absolute viscosity which is measured at 60 degrees centigrade, generally Canon Manning vacuum viscometer is used and this is the tube of Canon Manning viscometer. This procedure is given in ASTM D2171 and also in IS1206 part 2. Now since the bitumen here at 60 degrees centigrade is quite viscous, the viscosity of the binder at this temperature is quite high. A vacuum of 300 millimeter of Hg or mercury is applied to flow the bitumen in anti-gravitational direction. So this is the mark in the large tube up to which the bitumen is filled and then vacuum is applied so that it flows from this point to this point and from this point to this point. So these are three points important. This is one mark, second mark and third mark and time is measured taken by the bitumen to flow through these timing marks. This time is then multiplied by the calibration factor of the bulb and the average of viscosity is considered as the absolute viscosity at 60 degrees centigrade. Now let me demonstrate this test. The first step is to heat the binder so that it is in a easy flow condition. Then pour the binder into the viscometer through its large site carefully until the level of the bitumen reaches the filling line. The binder as far as possible should not touch the wall of the tube. After that the filled viscometer tube is capped in the water bath for a prescribed period of time to obtain the equilibrium temperature of 60 degrees centigrade and that is called the conditioning of the sample. After that, once the temperature is achieved, a partial vacuum is applied to the small side of the viscometer tube 
and this vacuum will cause the bitumen to flow. Application of vacuum is necessary because bitumen is too viscous to flow at its own at 60 degrees centigrade. Once the bitumen starts to flow, the time in seconds required to flow between two timing marks is measured. Then the measure time is multiplied by the calibration factor for the viscometer tube and this factor is supplied by the tube manufacturer. So these are the calibration factors for lower bulb this is 0 0.7107 and for the middle bulb this is 0 0.2459 and let us say time taken by the bitumen to flow from this mark to this mark is T1 and from this mark to this mark it is T2 and these are the calibration factor F1 and F2 then viscosity in poise is the average of these two values. The kinematic viscosity is measured at 135 degrees centigrade and this temperature corresponds to mixing and laying temperature at the time of construction. Brookfield rotational viscometer and Jet Fuchs cross arm viscometer are used to identify kinematic viscosity of bitumen. In Brookfield rotational viscometer, a spindle is suspended in the heated bitumen and torque with a constant speed of 20 RPM is applied to measure the viscosity of the binder at different temperatures. As the temperature increases, force required to apply torque will be less as the resistance by the binder will decrease. And ASTM D4402 provides the complete procedure of finding viscosity using Brookfield viscometer and it suggests a spindle number 21 for determination of viscosity. So Brookfield viscometer is a rotational viscometer. A measuring body called spindle is used to generate the resistance. So the first step is to take appropriate amount of the binder in the container. Then this container is placed in the temperature controlled chamber and a preheated spindle is inserted into the bitumen in the chamber and couple it to the viscometer as per instruction given in the viscometer manual. Then bring the asphalt sample to the desired temperature within 30 minutes and then allow it to remain at that temperature for 10 minutes. Then start the motor rotation of the viscometer at a speed that will generate a resisting torque between 10 and 98 percent of the instrument capacity. Maintain this speed for about 5 minutes. Measure either viscosity or this torque at 1 minute interval for a total of 3 minutes. Some instruments may also perform these automatic calculations and will give you the kinematic viscosity in centipoise. Kinematic viscosity can also be measured using Jait Fuchs cross arm viscometer. Now, because the, at the temperature of 135 degrees centigrade, the asphalt content is sufficiently fluid to flow through the capillary tube under gravitational force alone, and therefore there is no need to apply any partial vacuum as in the case of Canon Manning viscometer. Now, here asphalt cement is poured into the large opening of the viscometer till filling the line at pouring temperature and this is the filling line. A slight vacuum is applied to the small opening or a slight pressure is applied to the large opening to induce the flow of the bitumen over the siphon section just above the filling line. Then the gravitational force causes the bitumen to flow downward in the vertical direction of the capillary tube. A stopwatch is used to measure the time in seconds required for the bitumen to flow between two timing marks and these are two marks here in the tube. This time is multiplied with the calibration factor of the tube to get the kinematic viscosity at 135 degrees centigrade and this tube viscometer 
is also recommended in ASTM D2170 and also in IS1206. There are other viscometer also to determine the kinematic viscosity. Lange, Jet, Fuchs type reverse flow viscometer or a U-tube reverse flow viscometer or Canon Fensky opaque viscometer. But in all these tube viscometer, the basic principle remains same that determine the time required by the bitumen to flow between two marks and this time is multiplied by the calibration factor for the tube to get the kinematic viscosity. The viscosity is used to determine the compaction temperature of HMA and also the mixing temperature of the mix. If you plot viscosity and temperature correlation, viscosity taken on y-axis in log scale and temperature on x-axis, then the change in viscosity with temperature will be like this. A selected temperature corresponding to a viscosity of 0.28 pascal second for the compaction temperature and mixing temperature will be corresponding to a viscosity of 0 0.17 plus minus 0 0.02 pascal second. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your suggestion in the comment box.